right. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Meredith Greer. I'm one of the pulmonary fellows. Um, and, oh, God, this is really embarrassing. I'm on call. Sorry, I have to take it. Hello? Dr. Greer, Dr. Greer. <laughs> the patient with severe asthma just got intubated in the ED. They're really sick, and I don't know what to do. Please help me. It's going to be okay. Calm down. We're going to all talk through this together, okay? I got you. All right, so right now, this is probably what Rich's patient looks like trying to breathe on the ventilator, and this is probably also what his intern looks like, just having got that call. They walk into the room. Every single bell is going off. The blood pressure is going down. The heart rate's going up. The oxygen's going down. The CO2 is rising. It's terrifying. Much like any ICU consult that you get, it feels like a bomb that somebody's just thrown at you to diffuse, and you have no idea how. So. I want to give you three simple steps so that you can save an asthma patient's life. Number one, unhook. Number two, sedate. And number three, decrease the rate. So to understand why we want to do that, we need to know why is this happening? What's going on? And luckily, with most asthma patients, all their problems are caused by one thing, and that is auto peep. So what does that mean? What does it lead to? Uh, what does it look like? And most importantly, what you probably want to know is how you get it to stop. And so that's what I want to get through today. So what does it mean? So quite literally, what it means is self-created positive end expiratory pressure. So remember, your asthma patient has obstructive lung disease. They can get air in, but they can't get air out. Now they're having increased bronchospasm, and so that leads to air trapping, and they don't have any time to exhale. So what happens is you get decreasing O2 because you can't get new air in. You get an increasing CO2 because you can't get old air out. And then the most feared complication is that you get a tanking of your blood pressure because as they breathe and breathe and breathe, that intrathoracic pressure increases such that blood can't get back to the heart, never makes it through the lungs, never gets out the left side of the heart. And that's how an asthmatic can actually die. So because it can be so serious, I want you guys to be able to recognize this. So this is just a cartoon de depiction of a flow versus time curve. Um, as you can see, the dotted line is just a regular person like you and me. Every time we breathe in, we breathe out. We get all of our air out. We get back to that zero line. But this patient who has asthma, who's having this air trapping or this auto peep, is actually never going to be able to breathe out. They never get all the air out to get back to their baseline. So every time that vent gives them a new breath, it's just worsening their problem. So this is what it looks like on the actual ventilator, just so you know how to recognize it. This green line is the flow versus time. And you can see outlined here, with every breath, they're never getting enough out. And so just more air is stacking up, and it becomes a vicious cycle. So how do you get it to stop? That's probably what everybody wants to know. So what I want you to do is walk into the room when you see this patient, just go right up to them confidently and unhook them from the ventilator. Dr. Greer? I know. <laughs> it sounds scary, and people in the room might try to stop you. It sounds crazy. But now that you know the physiology, you're going to be able to explain to them why you're going to do that. Remember, your patient can't get air out. That ventilator is just stacking and stacking and stacking. And so if you unhook them from the ventilator, it gives them a chance to breathe out. All they want to do is exhale. Just remember, this gets you back to that baseline, but it's only temporary, unless you do our second step, which is sedate. I don't really care what you sedate with. Whatever you have handy, you need to get into that patient. You want to get control, that's your goal. So if you have propofol or ketamine, that's great, because those are both shown to have actually bronchodilatory effects, but anything that you can get in to get control of the ventilator. I know, it's another alarm. <laughs> Don't worry, that's just the ventilator alarm, okay? So remember, what we've done so far is we unhooked the patient and we sedated them, but we put them back on the vent. And so unless you change your ventilator settings, that problem's not going to go away, okay? So you want to make your settings based off your blood gas. So this is your blood gas here, 7.0 and 80 is the CO2. Sounds scary, not ideal, but what I don't want you to do is to just cut that red wire and increase the respiratory rate. What I actually want you to do is decrease the respiratory rate. <laughs> I know that sounds like the opposite of everything that you've been told. Anytime you're in school, they say when you have an increased CO2, you want to increase your minute ventilation. And oftentimes, we do that by increasing the respiratory rate. But remember, this patient can't blow out. 
The only way that you can get rid of CO2 is to blow it out. So what you need to do is actually give them more time to exhale. Let me show you. So here's a ventilator. This patient's set to breathe at 26 times per minute, probably similar to how fast they were breathing during their asthma attack. The number next to it is the I to E ratio, and that tells you how much they're breathing in compared to how much they're breathing out. We choose how fast they breathe in, right? Inhalation is active on the ventilator. We're forcing air in. But exhalation is passive, and so we rely on time for them to get the air out. And these patients need more time. So same patient, new rate. Set them to 14, and look, their I to E ratio has gone from 1 to 2 to nearly 1 to 5. Look at their graph. They have almost the entire screen to breathe out. And now you've gotten back to your baseline, back to zero, thus getting rid of your auto peep and thereby getting rid of your CO2. So your blood gas comes back. It's 7.15 and 60. I want you to consider that a success. Great job. <laughs> you know, this patient is sick. They have obstructive disease. They're not going to be perfect. It's never going to be 7.4. But just remember, the rule for blood gases is the enemy of good is better, right? So as long as you're going in the right direction, we want you to consider that a success. So now, hopefully, this is what your patient looks like, resting comfortably on the vent. And hopefully, you and your intern can go back to your call room and get some rest, too. And just remember, whenever you walk into that room and all the bells are going off and every single vital sign is going in the wrong direction, if you just follow our three simple rules, unhook, sedate, and decrease the rate, that's how you can save an asthma patient's life overnight. Thank you.